Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this little lesson on how to paint a saguaro cactus in the desert. And this one's going to be um, sort of trying to keep it simple. A lot of the photos that I found have lots and lots of cactus in them. So we're just going to try to keep it simple because um, so I think this will be fun. So to start off, I've got a six by eight canvas today and I'm going to be using my, um, I've got my turp jar up here and I've got out my paints. You can see up here, I've got black, white, raw umber, cad yellow, um, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium red medium, alizarin, transparent brown and red oxide, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, viridian green, sap green, and this is just some bright magenta color I have. Um, we'll see if I can find the tube. And it's by Gamblin. And this is dioxazine uh, violet. And um, this is some Davies gray, which this color I don't think I will be using in this painting I was going to do um, a different scene, landscape scene, and it, that was going to be needed. So don't worry about the Davies Gray. Okay, so to start off with, I'm just going to tone the canvas with, um, I'm going to use a little bit of this dioxazine uh, violet color. It's a real, you know, great color. When I do landscapes, I like to add a little, I'm using a little brown oxide and some of that dioxazine um, violet for my underpainting. I think it'll go nicely with that little bit of purple in there and with all the green and rust, rusty colors, I added a little bit of that brown oxide in there. I think it would look fine just doing straight purple. But you just never know. You don't want it be to be too too crazy. So once you get a good layer of that down, just wipe away with your paper towel. And you should be ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to this number two flat. And um, then I'm going to kind of sketch out where everything's going to go. So I'm going to get a little bit of this transparent red, ox red oxide for that and uh, just get it, get it in there. A little bit, little bit of turp just to kind of help it spread. And I'm going to start off by kind of putting in that um, the horizon line here. Sorry, my brain's not working so well today. I went to the I went to the dentist and had my teeth cleaned and feel stuff like that kind of discombobulates me a little. And we've got the little top of the saguaro here. I'm just going to draw that in there like that. And then we've got the little arms. In there. Like that, just kind of thicken it up a little. And you'll notice I'm paying attention to how it kind of, you know, where, how high the arms go. The reference photo has another arm kind of coming behind, but I'm going to leave that one out. Make that a little taller. 
And the reference photo also has the little, the little bloom starting on top of the cactus. And because it's such a small painting, it would just look kind of confusing if I added those in there. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and leave the saguaro like this. So just sort of little things that, you know, I know if I was teaching in a class, people would say, why are you leaving the little blooms off and all the rest? So I'm just sort of gonna simplify everything here. Now I'm just gonna use a little bit more of that dioxazine uh, violet uh, or dioxazine purple and just sort of go over that little mountain range a little darken it just so I can really see where those lines are. And then there's um, this, there's a little bump that comes down here and you're just seeing the top of it up there. And then there's kind of some green. And then it looks like there's some mountains in the far distance back here. So we'll put that in um, with a little lighter paint. And then in the foreground, there's a lot of, um, there's some darks and lights in there. So I'm gonna add some of the darks with that dioxazin purple. Just sort of put some of those, looking at my reference photo and paying attention to where there's some darks and where there's some lights. And I'm just kind of add some of those in right away. And I'll get some of that transparent red oxide and I'll put a little bit of that in there too. I see some real rusty looking dried out desert plants there. And there's a few little saguaros over here in the in the back. Might put a just I'll put, you know, something in there just to give that feeling that there's some little ones in the distance there. there. And so now I can, I'm going to wipe away some of that under paint a little, just kind of smooth it out a little. I put it in more for the value than anything, just to kind of create some darker values. And then we've got clouds here and blue sky in the in the background there. So I'll leave that for now. There. Okay. So now I'm just going to, I'll get this larger brush. This is the number four. And I wanna go in and work on some of these little bushes and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna just grab a little bit of the sap green here and I'm gonna mix a little, um, we'll try a little bit of this raw sienna just so it's not, it doesn't need to be, the green is not super green, so it's got to be a little dulled down. So I'm going to add some of that, that um, raw sienna to the mix. And kind of yellows it a little. And I'm going to put wherever I see those little green bushes sort of in there, I'm going to put some of that in there. And it kind of comes down here where I had the darks earlier. Now on top of that kind of nice purple, I'm going to add some of that. The whole goal is to, you know, show the landscape without, for me anyways, it's, I don't want it to be 
hyper realistic. I want it to look like a nice pattern, more color and design. So here I've got the greens. Come down here. I don't want to leave some of those nice oranges that I have underneath in purple. So I don't want to, you don't want to block in some perfect looking green. Put that in there like that. And then I'm going to go and get some, maybe some yellow ochre and some sap and add a little lighter layer of sort of the, where there's a little light on top of those bushes. So just kind of going over a bit what I had on there with the darker green and now just adding a little bit of light. Starts to really, you know, come alive there. So sap and yellow ochre for this mix. Might even add a little bit of white and some little viridian in there to kind of get a bluer, cooler green. So now I've got some viridian and white in that mixture and I'm going to add some sort of lighter marks that kind of come out of the desert back there for those cactus. Kind of my imaginary saguaros back there that are kind of coming out of the, the background. And I'll use some of that cooler green back there. When you put in some cooler colors in your landscape further back in on the horizon there, you're kind of going from warm, a warmer foreground to that cooler, um, background and then what happens is it starts to look further away from the front so I'll keep it warmer up front and cooler back there and then I'm going to get a little bit of that red oxide now and some yellow ochre and I want to put in some of those Kind of, they look like kind of burnt shrubs or something that got burnt by the summer sun. So some yellow ochre, some of that red oxide in there. Just kind of dab that in. And you just kind of get building up to your each layer is sort of like gives you something new to work with. So there's going to be a lot more layers, but for now, I get a little more in the foreground here. Now I can go in and add some darker um, spots in, back in again. And same with up here where there's some that kind of layer of landscape there that gets dark. Some real dark spots in there. Now I'm just kind of blending those layers in a bit. So it's starting to have some depth and some, some variation. Now I'm gonna to go to a little smaller brush and I'm just gonna get some sap green and some of that transparent red oxide. And I wanna go in and just sort of put that dark side on my cactus, you know, that shadow in there. 
and because I want to be able to show off some of the details on the cactus. And now that I've got that sort of nice warm side of it, I can go back to my little pool of, you know, I had, I have some viridian and yellow ochre and I'm gonna go and put that now on top. Okay, so now we've got some green, but then what I like about that is there's some of that warm in the shadow, that kind of transparent warmth that's coming from that layer of sap green and the red oxide. Now we can add a little bit of white to that mixture, the viridian and the yellow ochre. And you can kind of add that real, you can even add a little more yellow ochre, kind of make it a little bit yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of that cadmium yellow to it. And I wanna get that highlight going down on the sides. There and a little bit on the inside there. I added a little viridian to kind of the middle layer. So you got that kind of dark, and then you got that. I kind of added a little more viridian in that in that green. And then I put the lightest light one is the cadmium yellow and a bit of white in there. And I'm gonna go and just add a little more paint down there. And I do wanna kind of keep it simple. So I don't wanna get too much more detail work on that, but that gives you the idea. Now I'm gonna go back to my, um, I'll get a little bit of sap in there. And I see there's a, you know, you can see a bit of another um, arm showing up kind of behind. So you could put that in, we could delete it later if it doesn't really work. And I'll get a little bit of that sap and go into the shadow a little down there. Some, just a little sap green in there. And I need to darken that last one. If I'm gonna keep it, get it a little darker. There, so now it's more kind of in the background. Okay. So now I wanna build up, I, I'm gonna leave the detail out of this for now and I'm gonna keep blocking. And so I wanna um, block in some of that sky. I'm gonna get some cobalt blue and some white. And I wanna get in some of that dark blue sky up here. So I'll put some of that, you can go darker if you want, but I'm gonna do that. And I wanna leave some of that purple in there so that it's kind of consistently showing up in the landscape. So I'll leave a little bit here and there showing alongside the cactus like that. Keep going. Just blocking in here. And I'm leaving little bits of that wash 
to show up. And you can have fun playing with color when you make, you know, your landscape paintings. And I have a few other videos on Patreon about adding color to, you know, to landscapes. I'm just going to wrap this down and around here. Like that. And then as you get down, I'm going to carry that down a little still on here. And I want it to like be like the reference photo, how this sky kind of angles a bit. I'm gonna keep that darker blue layer coming down like this. And then I'm gonna add more white to that cobalt mixture for that layer of sort of cloud that comes in. So I'm gonna just lighten it up with some white. We'll add a tiny bit of that turp in there just so it kind of goes a little faster. And I'm gonna get that in there behind the cactus. And there's a little bit of a kind of a mountain range back there. I'll leave that for now. Just work on getting the sky in there. Like that. And if your brush starts to pick up a little too much of the cactus, just make sure you have a clean paper towel that you can wipe your brush off while you're as you go. Just gonna mix a little more of that color up. And as it gets closer to that little ridge, it, the clouds get a little lighter even and whiter. So I'll let I'll I'll kind of put some of that in just because I like the gradation of the dark to light. It doesn't need to be perfect, you know, or exact. And I like the little bits of that purpley color coming through. Just kind of go over your marks a little. You don't want anything that's too eye catching, you know. Just, just when I go over it like this, I'm just thinking about keeping it in the background more. I don't want any marks that are too severe that draw the eye. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that in. Go back over that edge there. I 
And when I'm working on a canvas like this, sometimes you get, the edges get a little too messy because the paint just doesn't, when you're working on a gesso board, the paint doesn't really catch any canvas. So when you're, you know, bringing the paint up to an edge like that, it's easier. But when you've got this canvas, it shows a lot of the canvas texture. And sometimes that's fine, but then sometimes it can kind of look too sloppy. So I'm just kind of going around those edges a little and cleaning them up a little. And I'll just get some more white and put some kind of clouds here and there just to give it that. effect. Okay, so for now, I like that. And then now that you've got the sky in there, you can kind of go and see you've got a lot of room to add some brighter values in there. So I'm going to go get, first of all, I got to get rid of that brush out of there. I'm going to get my this brush here, number four flat, and I'm going to add some of that white to my mixture of red oxide and yellow ochre. And I want to just get in some of that nice, um, some of those nice bright hits of um, that where that burnt grass really shows up there. Some real bright hits of it over here. And I kind of make the mark and then I'm gonna, you know, I, I make a mark and then I'll kind of drag up some of that grassy looking stroke after. And over here, I'm gonna add a little more of that red oxide. And you got some of that real nice color over here. Kind of comes down. A little bit of that yellow and red oxide, yellow ochre, just to get something kind of warm here. And then just sort of drag up the, the stroke a little. I even add a bit of that alizarin crimson and the red oxide just to get some real real warm spots in there. There's some in the distance, so I'm going to add some white to that mixture just to set it back. Even Remember we talked earlier about adding a little bit more of a cooler touch to the colors in the in the distance gives you that feeling that they're a little further back and then warmer in the foreground. So you could get some alizarin in there and that red oxide and just get some some real warm marks up 
in the foreground there. And then I'm gonna go and add some highlights to that green. So I'll get the sap and white and cad yellow light and get some of those greens in there that are a lot brighter. And then I kind of go over and blend them in a little. And here it's a little bit hard to discern what's going on, but I'm going to add some of that, some different greens in here. And I kind of mix it up a little so there's it's not just all one. One green. So now I'm going to uh, squint down and I can add a few dark uh, greens in there. Get that sap in there again and some red oxide and just sort of put in a few dark spots back in. And for the that rusty area, just get some of that red oxide back in. And get some of those darker spots in there. And then there's some room to now add a little bit more of a highlight to the swaro, lighten up a little so it stands out. So I'm getting some green and white and some of that cad yellow light. And I'm just gonna go and add a bit more, get a little more white in there. And just go back in and really add a bit of a highlight to those. Like that. And even these little saguaros I put in here, I could add a little, just a little bit of a highlight to some of those. and take some of that same green and there's a few little details in the in the desert scape there that have that same kind of brightness to them so you could put a few spots of that in there And now I'll go get some white and mix it into that red oxide. And maybe just for fun, add a little bit of red in there to give it that pink color. And put a little bit of that. Um, it kind of gives you a sense of, it's a very kind of cool desert, you know, showing through there just something different in the color wise, but it's also sets it further back, the, the pink. You could put a little bit of that in, coming down in here. 
Just sort of play with color a bit and then you can soften that line a bit. Just gently, you know, pull some of it down with your brush. And I kind of soften some of the other areas too. So now we have a little, you can kind of take a look at what you got and see what could I add in here? Some little, maybe some brighter areas of that kind of orangey color. So I'll add a bit more of that brown oxide back in and a little yellow. And you could go and add some of the, those brighter, highlights to the oranges there. Sort of work that in there, just add some brighter color to your scene and just gives a little more depth, you know. Um, can I see where else you might put it? There. So you can do the same with the green now, just sort of dab a little bit of detail in here and there. But overall, I think I'm happy with that. And I might add a little bit of purple just for fun. A little purple, you could use a little bit of that cobalt that's there and just put a few little bits of that purple. Um, into the mix just to kind of contrast with the greens and the oranges. You could even put a little bit in your cactus just for fun. Sometimes I get a little carried away and put a few little dabs of this yellow ochre in there, like kind of gives you the impression of something, some flower, some sort of flower in there. So, so I think I, for a simple uh, cactus scene, I'm happy with that. Um, and I hope to see what you paint. I'm gonna be looking out for your paintings if you wanna post them on Bold Strokes, feel free to do so. And um, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson and I look forward to making more, I think more landscape lessons in the future. So um, happy painting. <laughs>